my students who have taken any of my courses over the last eight years or so, um, and you are coming over from the actions that I use in my retouching setup, whether it's from the retouching series, Creative Live, etc., any variation that um, preferably the most recent Portrait Masters uh, retouching series, in that you will notice that I have these actions. And regardless, even if you don't have these exact ones over the course of time, you might not, you might even have a watered down version of them. But uh, if you have my most recent actions, you'll notice that I always use this retouching setup action and it sets up my action set here. And the reason why um, I actually decided to go and make an infinite retouch panel itself was over the years I had so many questions about, well, you know, I use this, but I want to customize my workflow where maybe I don't want my uh, first folder to be called clean. I want to be called something else. And you'd have to go and rename and, you know, recode your own action set, etc. And it was just wasn't modifiable and editable in a way that infinite retouches. And if you've already seen all the other videos, then you know specifically how flexible and customizable it is in a way where you don't even really need these actions anymore, which is phenomenal. So with that being said, um, what I would like to say is that if you would like to bring over this retouching setup into Infinite Retouch, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do that. Number one, um, if you want it to be your main create button, the first thing that I would highly recommend you do before watching this video, please go watch the video on the create button itself and all the functionality that it has so you don't miss anything. Because then you can really take control over creating your own workflow. Okay. The second thing I want to mention is let's say we go through the process of taking these layers that the retouching setup generated and importing them into Infinite Retouch. The way that we do it, again, if you know how the create button works, is I'm going to go ahead and first open up the help layers. I'm going to delete this uh, grain because we cannot use pixel layers in uh, saving a workflow stack, as you saw from the previous video. Next, I'm simply going to click um, on the top help group here and then click on uh, the background help the background. So all the way through like this. And if you, you know, open up these folders here, you'll see that you want to just kind of make sure that they're you know, all selected just in case, just in case uh, you have it all selected here. Okay. Next, I'm going to right click. I'm going to say save personal folder setup cool. Also, where it says auto run action. I'm going to go ahead and click on action set. I'm going to say my action set, right? I'm just going to click on this one because it's the same thing, but it is laid out a little bit differently. Then you're going to locate the grain because what it's going to do now is if you already know how this button works, um, which you should, since you already saw the video, um, is it's going ahead and uh, saving the retouching stack and then throwing the grain on top. Okay, so let me just go ahead and delete these layers here, like so. Come back to the create button, click on create, and then you'll see it right here. It'll say like this. So it has everything for me available. And if you want, um, you know, you don't have to have this particular layer if you don't use it in your workflow. But if you do, then fantastic. Then of course, you know, feel free to do that. Um, another thing that you can also do is if if you don't want any help layers at all, you'd simply just delete them like this. And then just highlight everything like this. Right click, save personal folder setup. Boom, you can also, you know, not run any action if you so choose to, because then what happens now, if I delete everything, click on create, then it just sets up those main ones for me. And then if you want to use help layers, you are able to have your own help layers, which is a lot more than just luminosity. It has color, saturation, hue, etc. Um, yeah. So there you go. You can use a ton of them. So now it's uh, totally customized your workflow in any way that you want. So that's one way of doing it. The second way of doing it is if you prefer under the user section, which is again, as you know, it's just like the create section, except there's even more options for you to add more layers. 
I'll just create a new one, right click for setup. And then I'll just say auto run action. And then just go to retouching setup, say apply. And that's it. You don't have to save any personal layer stack or anything like that. It's just this button will simply be used for retouching setup. Like so. You don't have to hit enter or anything. You just exit and it saves it automatically, saves the button name. I'll go back. Then when I click on retouching setup, it will just run the action for me. So that way, if you so choose to just have one panel open and not the actions folder here, because the rest of them, you'll see it says frequency separation. That's located here, frequency, low and high preview. And you should check out videos on all of these. And you, you will already know that these options here are way more advanced than these ones here. We have uh, grain by itself. Of course, if you well, like to do that, you can click on grain. And in the grain video, you saw how I made my own little, you know, preset like this. And I can apply that anytime that I want to in its own specific layer, you know, makes that super easy to do. And it's just like my preferred noise that I have on top. So that's where that is. Color fix is going to be here under tools. It says color, hue and saturation. Again, there's a lot more than just color now. We have dodge and burn. So that's going to be under retouch. You will see dodge burn. We have curves, blank layer. Blank is a 50% gray layer, which is a soft light dodge and burn. Uh, darken basically just darkens the image, but now we have level and level allows me to, you know, really just make sure that I can see in a darker or lighter way to see in my shadows more, or I can darken it down to see, you know, into the uh, brighter areas. So that's already taken care of. Um, so yeah, solar curve, etc. A black and white helper layer. These two are already here. Luminosity, you know, um, they're already there. That makes it super, super easy to use. Um, you have oversaturation mask. And if that's something you use a lot, you can easily just go ahead and add another one and just say right click for setup, oversaturation, etc. Oversaturation. There we go. Auto run action. Action set is my actions. I can got oversaturation over here. They apply. That's it. Done. Now I have oversaturation retouching setup. So I can then, you know, bring in any act, even if it's color grading actions, or even if it's something you make on your own, it all goes here. And you can make as many kind of as you want. And it just goes down the list like that. Okay. We have sharpening options as well and, and so forth. So of course, we have our own export tab too, which, you know, is its own little video. So make sure you check that out. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Now I can just go ahead and, you know, kind of remove this tab group here and make Infinite Retouch my main go to source. Now it has everything that I need in one nice panel. It's easy to use. So if you're coming over from my actions, that's how I ended up using Infinite Retouch in combination with my own user layers. So user layers, again, doesn't have to be layers that you save from the layer stack. It could just be simple as clicking on it and then just saying, I would like to just use this as a button to run an action. And then that's it. You're done. And this is great because as you know, there's some things that retouching um, the infant retouch cannot do, like add pixel layers. It cannot add um, uh, masks that you already kind of worked on. Maybe it cannot add um, color lookup layers. So if you have that need in your workflow setup, you can combine that with user layers. So there you go. Hope that helped. And uh, again, please make sure you watch all the videos to get you up to speed in using panel itself.